Hey friends, welcome to the channel. Today we're, we will be talking about disconnect switches, specifically what it is and its purpose, what it's not, common types of disconnect switches, and how they operate. Before we get started, if you are new here, I'm an electrical engineer based in Texas, and on this channel we explore and expand our knowledge on all things related to substation design engineering. Let's get into it. What is a disconnect switch and what is its purpose? So disconnect switches are mechanical devices that are used to isolate de-energized equipment. Usually there's always two disconnect switches and in the middle there's the device that you know you want to isolate. So they provide a visible break for the maintenance crew. So that visible break, let's pretend these are opening up. That's how they this is a center break V disconnect switch. They would open up right here and it would work towards isolating whatever equipment you want to maintenance. Alright guys, this is a disconnect switch, uh, specifically the one line symbol for it. It differs, uh, it depends on which client you're working with, but for the most part it'll look something very similar to this. And if you're completely new and you don't know what a one line is, leave it down in the comment section and I'll make a video on that too. So, one line symbology. Now let's build a scenario here, okay, of when how, how they're used exactly, disconnect switches. Let's just say that maintenance crew wants to service, replace, do something to this circuit breaker here. Um, here, the, the setup, we have very simple circuit, two disconnect switches on each side, circuit breaker in the middle, left to right. We got source, load, think power plant, think house on the right, all right? And remember, the scope here is we want to, maintenance crew wants to for simplicity, replace the circuit breaker. At this moment, it's not safe to touch, obviously. It's all energized, it's all live. So what it's not, disconnect switches are not used to de-energize equipment, they are not used to interrupt fault currents, and they are not used to break the circuit, to break a live circuit. That's what the circuit breaker's for. So here, for whatever reason, if someone were to just open these when it's energized, you would get some flames. You would get some arcs, and eventually, probably not that serious, but it would be pretty bad. Uh, and it would just be worse depending on the size of the substation, 69 KV, 138, 345 KV. And as I mentioned before, that's what the circuit breaker's for. Now let's look at an oil circuit breaker just to give you some perspective on this. So in a, with an oil circuit breaker, an OCB circuit's coming in here, remember source, load. Right now it's live. The circuit's closed, it's live. The first thing that's going to happen is the circuit breaker is going to be tripped manually by, some, by, the, by the maintenance crew. And to visualize what I'm talking about, in this oil, as it's opened, there's an arc. The purpose of the oil inside is to extinguish that arc. Now, just think, inside the oil circuit breaker, there is still an arc in there that's ex extinguished, and on the outside there's nothing. So it would just be, it would be pretty catastrophic not having some kind of extinguishing medium. Let's go through how to properly open this. So first thing is the circuit breaker is going to be tripped. So everything downstream of the circuit breaker, everything to the right will be, in theory, not live, it'll be de-energized. But still, at this moment, the circuit breaker is not safe. So once it's de-energized, once the circuit breaker is tripped, first the, the circuit breaker is tripped, then the disconnect switches are open, and now the circuit breaker is good to be worked on. So let's move on to common types of disconnect switches. We got vertical break, double end break, double end break V, center break, and the center break V. So the vertical break, which is shown here, it's where, so here we have the vertical break. Forgive the illustrations, I don't have licensing to use pictures from them, so these are just doodled by me, uh, but either or. The arm comes up and it breaks the circuit from from left to right. So from the left and right sides of these, it's connected to the rest of the circuit. And 
Once this is open, it isolates one side of it. Vertical brake switches are the most widely used disconnect switches, and, uh, and they can be installed with minimum phase spacing. So this is the double end brake, and I want you to notice that I have a front view and a top down view. One's closed and one's open. The blue area here is the motor. So the double end brake can be installed in locations with low overhead clearance. That's something that the vertical brake switches cannot do. And this is because the blades do not need to be lifted during operation. This one's more going to swivel in place versus arcing up. And the last cool thing about this is about these is the same phase spacing can be used. That's because the switch blades are disconnected from both the source and the load side when it's open. Source and load side. So if if this was connected over here and it opened up, the phase spacing would have to be huge because it's still live on one side. All right, the next one is the double end brake V. So it's the same concept as before as the double end brake, but this one, this time it's in a V formation. An additional feature of this one is that it uses the smallest amount of substation space of any of the three phase switching. All right, here we have the center brake and as mentioned in the name, it breaks in the center. So in the front view, it's closed, top down view, it's open. Here where my cursor's at, one side of it's going into the page, others coming out, as shown on the right. A downside for this one is that it requires greater phase spacing than a vertical brake switch. And that's because one of the two plate, one of the two blades per phase is energized in the open position. So Going with my example, on the left we had the source, on the right we had the load. The right side of this, this would not be energized. The left side of this would be, because this is coming from the source. So if you got ground close, close enough to this, there would be a short to ground there. Alright, and last but not least on the common type of switches that we're going to talk about is the double end brake V, All right, which this one's the one that we saw in the picture that I provided. Uh, I felt comfortable showing that one because I took a picture of that place. On the left, we have a front view. So both of these are front view, and they open up from the middle. So they open up from the middle, and one of the pros of these is they take up the smallest amount of space of all the three-phase switches. All right, let's talk about operating mechanisms. Operate, there's two ways that the switches are operated, and that's manually operated and motor operated. Manual operated, that's just where someone has to go there and physically do a movement to open up the switch after the right precautions have been taken. Um, not, there's really not that many that are manual crank like I'm, I'm showing here, but it's just for illustration purposes. I think the most common ones I've seen is like swing handles, gear cranks, and as mentioned, these are less commonly used, what I'm showing here. So like a key takeaway for this, like which one do you, are you supposed to use or which one to use? Number one, it's up to the client, but the choice of which manual operating mechanism is used is based upon the required amount of applied force necessary to open it. So I would say most of these are probably going to be found like in 69 kV substations, anything greater, and the force will probably be too great to, um, not saying it's impossible, I'm sure there are, but that's just one thing to keep in mind. All right, the next one we have is motor operated. I know it says manually, just realize it said that, but for the most part, someone else in another location, probably the control house, is gonna remotely open this up. So press the button or whatever, whatever method there is, it's remote and it's usually, then a motor would do the work for you. So much, much, much easier. Once again, this is determined usually by the client to see what it is they want. All righty, friends, just to recap, we talked about what, it, what a disconnect switch is, what its purpose is, what a disconnect switch is not, common types used, and how they operate. If you found some value in this video, please subscribe for more content like this. This is my first video. Uh, also, please, if there's something that you want me to uh, break down or elaborate on, something you don't understand being in your first years of engineering or a substation design engineering, please leave it in the comments below. and. I'll get to it when I can. Thanks, guys.